Let's look at risk number three. This could be in, in some ways the, the most interesting to me and the most surprising, Ian. It's weapons of mass disruption. It's not the first time technology or the tech sector has made it, but early on in this program, you said it's aging autocrats and tech bros. Why are weapons of mass disruption the top risk number three in 2023? By the way, the tech bros are also aging autocrats, let's be clear. Uh, okay. You look at them, <laughs> they're increasing. That's up. fair. That is happening. Um, look, we've been talking about the United States a lot over the first half an hour of the show, and uh, in, in positive ways. Uh, the, the democracy is more resilient than people think. The economy is doing well. It's helping to stabilize the global environment. They've got a lot of energy. Energy prices lower in the US than they are in Europe. They are in emerging markets. Uh, the defense, the United States defense, is, of course, helping to anchor. NATO in a much more significant way than was true before and is doing the most to defend Ukraine. All sounds great, right? Glad we're in the United States. But in 1989, when the wall came down, the United States was the most important exporter of democracy in the world, sometimes for good, sometimes for bad. But certainly that was the driver. That's how the wall came down. That's how the Soviet Union was defeated. It was ideology. Now, Today, 30, days, 30 years later, um, the United States has become the most important, the strongest exporter of tools that destroy democracy. And, and I, I think that that is completely unappreciated or underappreciated. We all know the reality of social media being damaging, of uh, technology companies having sovereignty in the virtual space. Nobody knows how to regulate them effectively. They make arbitrary rules that they feel like making. It can change radically on the basis of who owns it, who doesn't own it. I'm not suggesting that we like one regime or the other, or that we are playing favorites of which, which techno bro is our favorite. Rather, I'm saying that this business model of surveillance capitalism, this business model of maximizing profit which has as an incidental byproduct, the fundamental unraveling of the fabric of civil society has become a principal export of America to other democracies around the world. And the, the, the ironic thing is that it is precisely the openness and the democracy of the United States that has allowed that reality to incubate and grow. And the US is not the country that's principally at risk. The countries that are principally at risk are the ones that have the most brittle institutions. They're the weakest democracies. They're the ones where you know, anti-establishment populists on the far right or on the far left, empowered with disinformation, social media, media that they can manipulate and control disinformation can destroy democracies. And that, especially with new AI trends. And by the way, this risk, as you mentioned, Evan, is called weapons of mass disruption. It's the first time in 25 years that the name of one of our risks was ever written by an AI bot. It was actually written by chat GPT. We didn't write it. Maybe we should have used it for other ones too, because it was pretty good uh, as a title. But this is the year that the Turing test will be smashed by AI. And what that means is that many of us will not be able to distinguish between human beings and AI bots that are being deployed by human beings, in many cases with malevolent intent, to get us to change our actions, our views, um, our, our political orientation. That, that, it may not be risk number one, but my God, it's number three with a bullet, um, yeah. and, and it's moving fast.